<laughs> it's your pals. We brought the rain. I'm Jess. That's Jordan. That's Spencer. Hello. We're here to talk about down tuning and all the things about down tuning. So stay tuned. Tuned? <laughs> yeah, I don't. <laughs> Jokes. Shoot. I'm so funny. Look at that. I get... That doesn't work. Whoa. This is the jankiest stand <laughs> I in know. the history of the world. I feel like you'd be better off just holding the mic at this point. I think it got cross threaded or something. Why don't we just hold the mic? We can. Yeah. That's better because then we can just pass it around. Yeah. So earlier today, me and Jordan were talking about how, like, it used to be that drop D was, like, super heavy, and it used to be, like, if, if a band tuned to drop D, you'd be like, oh my gosh, they're not using standard, and it was, like, this big deal, but now it's kind of considered, like, not a big deal at all, because you have bands that are, like, in B or A or G or whatever, <laughs> so it's just funny how, like, times have changed. And they're fiddling around with mics. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so many jokes. Indeed. You know, some bands <laughs> have even gone as low as to tune a whole octave below drop C. Why are you looking at me when you say that? Did like, you know that? Yeah, I did know that. I didn't know that. Spirit Box does. Really? Yeah. Oh, they would. He's looking at me because he wants us to do that, and he knows <laughs> that I sing and see all the time, so he's staring into my soul to try and convince me that we need to tune to drop C. Well, I mean, like, drop, drop C, I guess. It's true. Like, permanent C. I remember that like when I got my first guitar um my grandpa played a lot of like country stuff and he he played with like Jerry Lee Lewis and he was on the like American Bandstand tour and whatever but um he so that's what I like guitar for me when I first started playing was like that's what like top level guitar was is doing like country stuff which is all standard tuning in guitar and um I remember the first time I discovered drop D I was like this is the easiest thing in the world. Like to know that a chord, you could just hold down three, the top three strings and like, it sounded heavier. It sounded fuller. It sounded like just so sick was so mind blowing. And then, um, I think the first, what's the first riff you learned? I think mine was killing in the name of, I don't remember. Um, I don't remember what the first riff I learned was. Um, I want to say it was something weird and very much not famous or well known. Mm. It was like something like Grandma Train or no, something like that. No, it was like, like the that. showdown, I think. The... No, <laughs> no, I learned other stuff before that. No, it was Showbread. It was not oh, like a yeah, magazine a show by Showbread. Something. Yeah, I remember that. And oh, you would make me song. sing it too. You'd make me do all the vocal parts and you'd just like be in the living room just playing it. Yeah. Yep, that was my first one. And that song's only in drop D, which is, like, high-pitched yeah. by today's standards. Yeah. yeah. I was actually watching a video where they were talking about this. And they said that the first band to go past drop D was Black Sabbath. And they tuned to a whopping C sharp. Wow. And that was considered the edgiest thing ever. That's yes. what the dive is tuned to is C sharp. Do you know what song it was? It was their whole, it was the whole, I don't remember what the album's called, but it was a whole album. From then on, they started doing it. Mm -hmm. And the reason wasn't to actually sound heavier. It was because the guitarist got in an accident where he lost some of the tips of his fingers. Mm -hmm. And it was harder for him to play. So he both got these like le leather things he wore on his fingertips i want those and also <laughs> tuned down lower because it made the strings not have as much tension and they were easier to play you need to get me some leather fingertips we'll name our band leathers <laughs> she's leather covered tips. in leathers leather <laughs> <laughs> well maybe it's not uh, this is why you wanted to talk about this though so that you could be smart Exactly. 
I know things. I want to hold the mic too. That the average mind does <laughs> not. Spin this, spin this part. Spin the spindle. Yeah, yeah, spin this. Prick your finger on the spindle awkward, of the spinning like, leaning. wheel. Yeah. And I'm like, the cool. spinning wheel. This was idea number one is that we hold the mic. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's like, there it is. Now we can just pass mics around. Oh, gosh. Okay. I'll just be holding two of them, like. <laughs> or not. <laughs> uh, what's your. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, what's your favorite songs? No, we're not. One take, <laughs> one take wonders. Yes, um, one take wonders. What's your favorite songs in Drop D? Oh, Which I don't know if I know every song. I, I I know for a fact I don't know every song in Drop D. But um, yeah, favorite songs in Drop D. Which, by the way, I feel like we should clarify this. So a nor like an, a standard tuning for an electric guitar is E is the top string. So when we say drop tuning, for those of you who don't know, because I feel like that should be this will be helpful, um, it's E is standard, and then you go down to D, and then, well, you can go anything in between. You can go E flat, like my acoustics are, are in E flat, or one of them is actually in D standard. But you so E, and then it most often goes D, C, and then keeps going down the scale by whole tones, right? Is that correct? Yeah, for the most part. I yeah. mean, the B is a little different from the G, but other than that. The drop or like the string, like the B string and G string? Well, like they're a little bit different. Like that's not a, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Oh, because I was saying whole tones. Is that what you mean? Yeah. So like from B to C, that's a half. That's a semi, not a semitone. It's a half note. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Music theory. Ooh. We should talk about music theory. Too. Oh, Here's an interesting. Yeah. How important music theory is. But anyway. Yeah, that, that would be good. Here's an interesting question. What was the acronym you used to remember how a guitar is tuned? <laughs> Every apple does good before elephants. <laughs> I didn't have an acronym. No, I didn't have an acronym. I just remembered oh, them. Eating <laughs> I, I never, I never used an acronym. What's the Dimitri Martin bit? He's a comedian. Those of you who don't know, uh, he, uh, it's. Um, every good boy does fine. Um, is I think is the like the in like music. I don't read music, I think but that's the treble clef. Yeah, so it's like every good boy does fine or whatever. And then he has a bit where he talks about you say you spell eggs but don't finish. Like it's <laughs> E G but don't finish. Like that's the yeah that's his the whole bit about it. it's pretty funny. Anyways, eating at Don's Grill by England. That was mine. Really? <laughs> yeah. For me, it was every acid dealer gets busted eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. There's truth in it. Yeah, you're not wrong. You get you get to memorize the guitar strings and you get a valuable life lesson <laughs> all in one. We could talk about how you gave that one hitchhiker a ride. And Let's not on... talk about that. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> That's the safe word. Is moving on. <laughs> Pretty pointed safe word. We brought the rain <laughs> podcast where you will need a safe word. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Today we learned some words. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the Oh wait. We need a third microphone. Yeah. But there's if anybody wants to speaking of which, uh Patreon. We have a Patreon if you want to subscribe to that. <laughs> we could buy a new microphone and these are not cheap. Although I told you about the person on Facebook. It was a either a logic pro or an ableton forum or a something forum that i was on on facebook and it was somebody said like hey what do you guys think about the um sure sm7b's which are these microphones and somebody said yeah they're a great budget mic <laughs> i was like what these mics who are has four hundred dollars just <laughs> sitting around like and that's a good price for them like no geez louise anyways 
Um, what was my question? I forget. Oh, importance of music theory or having to know music. Like, what's the how, how important is it? Like, we're talking about like drop tuning, so you have to know. You don't have to know necessarily, it but like helps. as you do it, you know like so E. And then you go to D and then you go to C like on a guitar or a piano, like, you know, your scales or whatever, like, where's the line of like, this is what you need to know to be able to like make music. Music theory. If you're a guitarist, music theory overrated. All you need to know, top half of the guitar, chuggity chug chug, middle to <laughs> upper half of the guitar closer to the pickups is the weedly weedly section weedly, weedly. so chuggity chug chug weedly 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 jess any input I know. oh okay so i took classical piano and my teacher was very very strict okay <laughs> yeah now it's now it's my time I t- <laughs> it's I my time to shine piano. okay um but she was super strict and if you didn't have the proper like hand technique or whatever she would literally slap your hand and i thought she hated my guts but when i graduated from it she was she told me i was her favorite because yeah anyways um i forgot <laughs> everything i learned from it <laughs> So I learned how to read music. I learned how to do all this like stuff, and we played like jazz sometimes. Um, so I have a lot of like jazz influence randomly. But <laughs> what do you like? What? <laughs> um, so like we learned all that stuff. But if I look at it long enough, I can remember it again. It's in there somewhere. But it does help. Like I feel like coming back with songwriting, whatever. So I don't know. Are you guys self-taught or trained? Like, did you first pick up your, like, so keys and guitar or bass? Like, did you pick those up by yourself and then just, like, figured it out? Or did you, like, have a starting point besides what you're doing now? We had, like, a family piano that was wildly out of tune. (laughs) It was pretty bad. And the keys all stuck. And I would just, like, hit it. And my parents got so annoyed that they were like, we need to get you some like actual lessons. So as far as piano goes, like I'm not really self-taught, but vocally, yeah, I'm self-taught. Um, so I had several teachers of, of the bass guitar method, one of which was <laughs> one of which was a DVD. <laughs> um, and that DVD was very helpful in learning how to pluck and slap my blues away. Um, the other one was a middle school band teacher named Mr. Peters. Mm. Mr. Peters was a jolly old fellow. Mr. Peters, if you're watching this, you rock. But, <laughs> yeah, he, he would always tell me that I was too loud and that I needed to stop using a metal pick and turn it down. And then whenever we were at concerts, I'd turn it up when he wasn't looking. That sounds about right. Um, <laughs> yep. So yeah, as for guitar, um, my fingers have been my teacher. <laughs> They, they teach me new new things every day. All right. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. I guess I could answer that question too. Uh, I think I remember I actually got a DVD too that was it was a Stevie Ray Vaughan. <laughs> it was it. So a guy made it for me. He heard that I wanted to play guitar, so he got me a Stevie Ray Vaughan. And then also a Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> nice. I don't know why he was like, he it's likes a weird guitar, Weird Al, that's the one. But uh, yeah, I watched this Stevie Ray Vaughan DVD all the time, and I just tried to play what he was playing. In yeah, but now it's created bad habits because Stevie Ray Vaughan he plays in like like if the body of the guitar is here, he like plays in a circular motion. So it's like like if you watch him, everything he does is like this. Versus a normal guitarist who's just like everything straight up and down with their strumming hand. He does everything in a circle. So now I have this bad habit that I had to break of like doing everything in a circle. And so it's pretty dumb. But anyways, kind of cool, I guess. I can play blues decent. 
if if your bad habit is learned from Stevie Ray Vaughan, is it really that bad of a habit? <laughs> yeah, <that's fair. laughs> you just live here bragging. I have some bad habits thanks yeah. to Stevie yeah. Ray Vaughan. Oh, hey, I just play t- with hey. too much feel. Like, yeah. no. <laughs> I can play blues so <laughs> well. I'm Spencer, and I'm amazing at no. blues. Hi, Gary Clark, Stevie. if you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah. Become a patron. He's not listening to this. <laughs> He's not listening to this. <laughs> also super good. Oh, uh, here you go. Beautiful transition that I just ruined by saying transition. Um, musical on. influences. That's a good question. More statement that you can answer. Who are your Who are your musical influences? And in like the, either the way you play or the way you sing or the way you like. Do they have to be a whatever. musician? I guess not. Are you Kanye? What is that like? <laughs> a painting? <laughs> Like, he's like, I, I would just look at a painting and I'm like, like, that's a E minor. Like, we get it. You have synesthesia. You're not alone, Kanye. Like, he was like, I was in Chicago. I saw a rat. It inspired me. Here's yeah. a new album. Okay. Let's, let's like, not, I have synesthesia let's too. But this, time. <laughs> this, time, this is take two of the podcast. This is, yeah. Hey, a biker Anyways. outside. Hey. Yeah, he's almost for sure. Moving There's, on. Uh, yeah. Okay. Musical influences. Who are your guys's? Just double mic. <laughs> um, my dad is my biggest one. Because I'm, I just want to make him proud of me. That's so nice. <laughs> he, he's just like he has this understanding of music that I don't, yeah. and that I aspire to have someday. And I just, yeah, he he makes me want to be better all the time. He'll just listen to a song and he can tell you every little detail of why it's an amazing song or why it's not an amazing song. And then you're like, oh, what do you play? And he's like, nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. What are your, do you have other inspirations? <laughs> I mean, Dance Gavin Dance is kind of cool. <laughs> you really raised the bar up. You, you're a dad for me, too. All right. All right. Moving on. All right. Um, If you could. So if there is any band in the world who was like, hey, we want you to get you want you to come uh, do like a vocal thing with us, like on stage or like we want you to come play guitar or something like uh, who would that be? Like, who would you be like so stoked for? Like if they're like, hey, Jess, we won't we're. uh we have a song we want you to come up on stage and do like a feature thing with. That's like my dream. Anytime I'm at a concert, like the, none of the bands will ever know me, obviously, but I'll just be like in the audience and I'm like, please, please. <laughs> and then there's time I've been to concerts where they're like, we're going to call like one of you random people on stage. And I'm always like, I get like really close to the front and I'm like staring them down, but they never pick me, but <laughs> probably nothing more or thrice because they're like my favorite bands and they're the best so jordan you can go first oh okay (laughs) oh um i don't know who would i want i'm not sure if i know i don't know a lot of guitar covers that's the problem if they would call me on stage be like guys listen i play guitar every day for so long I don't know any songs. <laughs> I just practice scales all the time. Like I have no idea. Um, I well, I bet I could figure out. Like I've seen. Like I feel like so they do. Like f- like Foo Fighters does it all the time, where they like Dave Grohl will go and grab somebody and they play. I feel like Foo Fighter songs are easy enough that I could figure it out and be like, "What keys it in?" And they'd be like, oh, "It's an E." I'd be like, "All right, I'm gonna jam over it," or "It's an A." Like I feel like I could actually you know what no i lied i would want like like uh gary clark jr or john mayer or some of those guys who do like a lot of more improv blues stuff i feel like i could do that really well like i could get in there and just be like let me just improv over something yeah like i that's i think where i would be the best because those guys just jam on stage all yeah (laughs) and they're so good that it would just be so much fun yeah so gary clark or john mayer like doing a live stuff especially john mayer trio when they did that with uh steve jordan and pino paladino they're the, it's like the greatest trio ever so i'd probably do that 
Rush fans just got so mad when I said they were the greatest trio ever. I just felt Rush fans being like... <clears throat> you felt their rage? Yeah, like, <sighs> chill out, dude. You're no, going to wake not. up from a dead sleep tonight and you're going to feel it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say a very specific uh, Chelsea grin, but during their ashes to... You went from John Mayer to Chelsea grin. Like that. <laughs> I'm gonna say Chelsea grin, but during their ashes to ashes to- tour when they had Jason Richardson on lead guitar so that I could do a guest solo harmonizing with him and sweeping alongside him. But the real question is, could you? If they gave me a, if they gave me some time to learn it, I'm so they call you a month in advance. And like, hey, Jordan, you're so dope. Would you come and do this with us? They're like Jordan. We don't know you, but we heard okay. that you want to do this. How about this? How about this? So, still, still playing with Jason Richardson during the tour, okay. but for their encore, Sean, they, Sean, I can't even talk. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> for their encore song, they play Recreant. Which I already know how to play, so I just go up there and just do the opening, and he's all like, "Yeah!" (laughs) Think of mice and men. Not of mice. Well, of mice and men would be sick too, but not right now because I'm not a big fan without Austin Carlisle because I think their (laughs) vocals aren't very good. But anyways, personal opinion. Um, I think O Sleeper would be sick. I do know actually know a couple of Sleeper songs that I think would be super fun, especially off their new album. That stuff's a lot more like riff driven rather than like lead driven that i think i could hang on a couple or at least one one for sure one for sure anyways um oh, what's another good question uh oh uh let's ask this one so future for the band in live shows slash recording the album now so like everything with like covid and all that stuff going on like what's the plan for going live shows and album being done like is there a timeline from one to the other or um yeah that's a good question thank you (laughs) i feel like you remember brian stars brian star is that his name (laughs) when he would come and ask he would go up it was warp tour he'd go every warp tour and he'd ask people he'd be like uh what's your favorite comic book superhero and you'd be like, ask like Riff Raff or like, oh, you're ready. Go ahead. Spider-Man. Okay. See, there you go. And uh, uh, Spider-Man slash Deadpool slash Spidey Pool. And then he would go, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then he would just ask his next next question. i be like, how'd you get that job, Brian? All right. Like you nerdy little turd. Anyways. Back to the real question. Yeah. Back to the real question. I'm going to check on the camera. Wait, what was the question? Uh, the question is, oh, this is the real thing. If I stand back here. Uh, the question is, um, so with COVID, with the, with recording an album during COVID and playing live shows, like, is there a timeline between like album getting done and live shows or with COVID restrictions or whatever? Like what's the, what's going on? Tell the people what's happening. Am I telling the people? I don't know. Both of you, all of us. I don't don't think we've ever talked about this really. Here we go. Are you doing it? I'll do a part of it. Okay. As far as live, <laughs> yeah, live yeah. shows go. Live um, shows go. I think it would be nice to do live shows when we have a drummer and a bass player. Drummers, bass players, come find us. Yeah. It sounds scary, but don't don't murder us, though. Just be nice. Anyways. <laughs> Was that what you were saying? See... Uh, okay, so the album is really, really close to being done. Um, there's a lot of final tracks that are already done. There's like two more songs that need to be kind of ready for final tracks. And then there's a cup, there's like a few songs that need vocal final tracks. So that's exciting. Like this is the closest we've ever been. I Ideally, it'd be nice to get it out like early next year, which I think is pretty doable if we like work how well we've been working lately which they don't know how (laughs) but we've been working pretty well um it'd be cool to like yeah i feel like we've finally figured out like what we're doing finally even though it's been like (laughs) maybe a couple years now we're like we finally got it down 
So if we stay on this track, it'd be nice to get it done early next year. But like, I don't think there's any point to like put pressure on it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I love playing live. I think we love playing live. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's played live and been like, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> it's well, so much people. fun. Yeah, it'd be great to play live gigs. That's the the hard part without a drummer. Again, drummer and bassist, hit us up. Um, the hard part without a drummer and bassist, and we find this like now as we're recording through the album, is like when we're figuring out a guitar part, like Jordan and I can sit and just play our parts over and over and over and like come up with new stuff. And then Jess can just sing like a normal band practice would go where you like are jamming through the song and you're coming up with cool parts and you're like, Oh, what if we did like a, like a jun, 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 there. And then it goes into a lead part or whatever it is like. So it's hard without a drummer or a bassist. Cause you're, we're kind of figuring out just what we can do. And then after that going, okay, what would drums do here? And so yeah. it kind of, it like, I think it leaves a lot of opportunities missed in a way of like where, when you do have a drummer, you can sit and work with the drummer and he'd be like, that's an impossible thing for me to do <laughs> <laughs> or say like, yeah, that's super sick. What if I do this? And they're like, okay, we'll follow you now. And yeah, there's a lack of that because there is none of that because there's no drummer. Yeah. Like in the beginning when we first started this, this is when before we're like, we even came to this area and Spencer joined and things like that. Like we were trying to write drum parts and I would just hit up like our friend Chandler. Hey Chandler, you're probably not going to see this, but hey Chandler, <laughs> uh, I'd be like, Hey Chandler, is this something that drums do? And he'd be like, Oh yeah, drums could totally do that. And then we were like, yes, we did it. We did it. We tricked everyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it'd be nice not to have to do that. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Um, you feeling me, dog? <laughs> yeah, you picking up what I'm throwing down? Homie. Yes. <laughs> My favorite thing about playing live is just, like, engaging the crowd. Like, I have a wireless mic. It needs, it has, like, a weird wiring issue that I probably should fix. <laughs> but um, once I fix it, I love, like, going out into the crowd and just running around and singing and screaming or whatever. And I realize I can scream again, so that's fun. So they'll, they'll probably be doing, or I'll probably be doing that. But that's my favorite thing, just like going out into the crowd and people's faces, they're like, what? You can do that? That's hilarious. Um, so what are songs that have inspired you as a musician to like, cause so as, so some people don't know, like it can kind of feel like when you're watching musicians who are really good, it can feel like they have something that you don't. And I, like I've experienced that a lot. I'll be listening to people and I'm like, what are they doing that I'm not doing? Cause this song is so sick. Like, but I've realized like, I listen to a lot of isolated vocal tracks and I, the guy who breaks it down on YouTube, he talks about like how the trial and error to get to where they're going. He had a, Spencer, whatever, Satello or whatever, Satello, I don't know, but he's the, he's the singer from periphery and he was, he was talking to him and he's like, how, like, how do you come up with your vocal parts? And basically he's, the way they do it is they write all the music first and then he comes in and he does all the, then he does vocals over the top of it, which is really interesting. But, um, I guess that's actually what we do pretty yeah, much. That's I basically say, what we the do. Backwards version of well, that. I think yeah. some songs we've done it that way. We kind of just do it whatever the song demands, honestly. It's like the song kind of tells us, and then we just do it. So let's do that first then, actually. <laughs> What's songwriting process? Like, who writes the songs? How do the songs come to be a song? I think each song is different. Um, I'm gonna, uh, am I allowed to track drop things? Oh, well, you'll see. <laughs> With Red Earth, um, that song was basically already pretty much written because it's really piano and vocally driven. So we just kind of added in all the extra parts. But uh, I think with Through the Storm, you kind of wrote a lot of the actual song, Jordan, like as far as the guitar goes. And I had like one vocal melody in mind, but I was thinking something a little more like metalcore-ish and you took it like really blues. And I remember I was like terrified at first. I was like, oh no. 
it's not nothing like what I was thinking. But then I realized it was actually like better. Um, that's the fun thing about songwriting. I think, I don't know, I think it's different depending on the song, but it's definitely a collaborative thing. I have a ton of lyrics that I just write constantly that I just like, if one of them is like playing something and I'm like, oh, that could fit there. Yeah. <laughs> <Is that it>? <laughs> <laughs> usually, usually, um, like you just will already have lyrics and sometimes a melody and we'll just kind of work from that yeah and lately i don't like any of my melodies so i've been kind of scrapping i know i'm in a weird (laughs) funk right now you guys i was doing pretty well but lately it's just been really weird and so i've just been kind of like like sometimes jordan will write my melodies or something else or they're they're like do this instead and then i do it and it's better (laughs) You're like, I know. <laughs> yeah. No one likes the melodies lately. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> so mean. That's so melodies. mean. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't. Uh, well, I'll turn the mic away from I'm your Jordan negativity, bud. No <laughs> All right. Um, let's see here. What's another good question we could ask? Um... Oh, oh! I said what songs? So songs that have inspired you to like continue in music, or like when you've hit those low points. So like some people are artists when they're painting and they see like the Mona. I'm not an artist, so whatever. But like if you like see the Mona Lisa, or you see like these famous paintings, or see who is that new guy? I forget his name. That he did the one. He did the painting where it like it dropped down through the um the the thing the, oh, I know what you're talking and it about. shredded yeah. the picture and then it was like double the price because of the like name, but i know who you're talking yeah. about yeah anyway so like for famous paint or for painters or people who are artists in that way who paint <laughs> they'll like see those artists and be like oh my gosh like it's almost defeating to see how good they are and like in like the same way though with those artists it's like practice and time and like consistently doing it and I know as for me as a musician, like when I, I, I'll hear a song and I get so inspired by that song rather than defeated. And I go like, okay, I want to do something like that. I want to be that good where I like leave an impact on people where I'm like, that is so sick. Like I want, how, what do I need to do to get to that? And so I'll like practice more and do that. Are there any songs or artists that have been that for you where you, you hear them and, or hear the song or an artist and you're like, I want, I want to strive to be like that. Um, I can't think of a specific song, but (laughs) there, there's a band, they're not like my favorite band or anything. And there's songs of theirs that I don't even like, but like the vocals, especially like it's, it hits different for some reason. It's, they're called fire from the gods, but like the way that the guy sings, you can feel like every emotion. And so like if something is inspiring to me musically, I'll just obsess about it until I figure out how to like recreate it. Not in like a copying way, but just like how can I do something similar to this and like put my own spin on it. So that like when I discovered that band, I was like, okay, like (laughs) because sometimes in the studio you can get kind of like sterile sounding vocally. And I was like, how do I not let that happen and how do I like capture every feeling especially when you're playing through songs over and over they're kind of getting stale for you like how do you like keep it fresh and it's it's almost like a weird voice acting like a theatrical thing so for me like that's a band that I kind of go to when I'm like getting ready to record and I'm like okay (laughs) how do we capture this and recreate it for me it's just any song that I can't really like play well yet on guitar. <laughs> um, recent examples would be Pangea by August Burns Red, although I have been getting better at that one. Or and lots of O Sleeper songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Polyphia, a lot of their stuff. And more recently, Through the Fire and Flames by Dragon Force. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get a 
We're gonna get a big fan set up for you. Get a big uh, fan set up, and I'm gonna grow my hair really long. <laughs> you just cut it. And I'll it. just flow it in the wind. <laughs> you just got a haircut. I know. I just <laughs> cut it like I cut. Was it yesterday? I don't even remember now. It was just like recently. <laughs> get a wig. I. Yeah, I feel like you guys come from a different background of music than... Well, I know you do, actually. A different background of music than I do. Because all of the stuff I grew up listening to was all acoustic-driven, very, like, minor feel. But I think it applies in the same way, where it's like... You get a feeling from a song, or an emotion from a song, or, like, something that's, like, a picture painted for you, and you, like want to go after that feeling or like that same idea like this one made me feel just angry like uh like vices like vipers is still from bio sleeper still one of, like still holds up today of like one of the best songs i think ever written like it just goes through so much like reality and the the music follows the chaos of like what um the lead uh screamer harsh vocal guy is like trying to like convey and it's super super cool but the song for me i forget i don't know the name but it was on a cd that my dad had and it was like it would talk about like vampires and maybe somebody might know but i it was like on a john butler collab thing and it was just so cool and i remember still now whenever i play the acoustic i'm always like i want that feeling in my songs but i can never figure out how to do it but um yeah, I think for uh, like our music specifically, I'm like, I, O oh, Sleeper is always the one I go back to. Then I'm like, that's just they have. I just know what they're trying to get across every time. It's yeah. super rad. Um, yeah. When I first heard Vices Like Vipers, I remember like I wasn't really listening to heavy music at the time, and I saw the CD and it caught my attention. And then I listened to like that song because the name of it just kind of like was interesting and I remember like being like so shocked by it I was like can people do this can people like make stuff like this and then my mom heard it and she was like is that Christian and I was like oh yeah um but I was like so just surprised that like a music like that existed a music a uh, music (laughs) a singular music could exist in the the atmosphere as such in the atmosphere (laughs) okay hint hint (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Wait, no, that song's already out, huh? I find you in the atmosphere. We don't, need, we don't need to start Ban-at. forming our song. Banat. What are you I'm saying? doing the guitar part. Banat. Do yours. Banat. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that song really left an impression on me, especially the sweeping part. I didn't even know at the time. We're trying to remember the drums for the song. That a guitar could do that. So I was just like, whoa, what is this? It was like ear candy. Ear candy. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to Skull Candy, which yeah. is a sick name for headphones, by the way. Um, okay, I already forgot my question, so that's cool. I have a question. Oh, I remember. Yeah. Good. Jif or Skippy peanut butter? Jif. Jif. Crunchy or smooth? No, oh, wait. No, you're supposed to answer. Oh me. Yeah. Jif. Okay. <laughs> Extra crunchy if you're like making it into like Thai peanut chicken or something weird like that. Otherwise creamy. Jess? Yeah, that's what I use to make the Thai peanut chicken thing he's talking um, about. <laughs> so I think what we're saying is if you eat Skippy, then you're, you're gross. You're a bad person. <laughs> well, they did get recalled that one time for salmonella, so. I thought that was Peter Pan. It was both. I thought Peter Pan, <laughs> the cartoon. No, there's a, a peanut butter. It's oh, Peter I was Pan. like. It has a little peanut. I don't think you guys know what salmonella is. <laughs> oh, the lights reset. That's Salmonelli. cool. And there we go. Back Peter to purple. Peanut Pan. Peanut. <laughs> peanut pan okay <laughs> moving all right on. <laughs> moving on uh so favorite this is a very very specific question favorite first song on an album like the first song on an album what is your favorite of those 
I don't even remember any of her songs on any of them. The only reason I asked is I remembered mine. I th- and I think I'm wrong on the song name. But yeah, something. you can look it up. What they I hit the think, if thing. I remember right, Why is it so difficult? on Of Mice and Men's self-titled album, oh my gosh. You Diggin' is the sickest intro song I've ever heard. Or whatever the first song is. It might be You Diggin', it might be a different one. It's not Westbound and Down. I know that. It's not Second and Sebring. But it, they're all on that album. But that was the first album I had heard where from like the very first song I was like, this is a banger. Yeah. This one. Oh, wait. Copyright. Can we get copyrighted on? No. Oh. It's pretty good. Stink Eclipse by Band of Sacrifice. Brand, just kidding. <laughs> band. A band of sacrifice. I also have a runner up. What, Dad? Up. Dad just <laughs> Dad just called me again. How does he always How does know? He, know? <laughs> he knows I was talking about him. Yeah, he sensed it. He was like, he told me th- he told me the other day that he can tell when people are talking about him. <laughs> I guess he can. Yeah, he's proven his point. He's like, what are you saying? He's like, my yeah. dad's senses are tingling. <laughs> Anyways, uh, moving um, on. My runner up is Welcome to the Jungle. Oh, uh, pretty good. I didn't it's know nice. that was the first song in the album. That's a really good first song. Yeah. That's the way to open up an album. That is sick, actually. That song is so overplayed, though, that I have a hard time going like, oh, how cool. But, like, realistically, it's super rad. That reminds me. I was in a gas station okay. with my dad. And right when he turned on the car, we just hear... <laughs> it was the funniest thing. That's really good. That's all. That's all. <laughs> um, I think I have like two. Blindside, that was like a band that I loved to death, like back in the day. And they had a song off their Silence album called Caught a Glimpse. And like that, that song just like opens it up so well. And then Nothing More is This Is The Time, Battleist or however you say it. That one is like, that's like a song that it, when I hear it, I'm like, how do I make something like this hmm. every time? That's an old question, so. Yeah, moving doesn't, on. Doesn't apply, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's sick. All right. Um, what question should we ask to wrap this bad boy up? Let's. So for those of you who don't know, we recorded one of these already and was having a hard time uploading everything so we're doing this again um last time we asked favorite bands i think or we asked we said f- musical influences or singers or vocalists i can't remember which one i think it was vocalists it's like top five yeah. we could do another top five we could do a top five every podcast like top five producers top five vocalists top five guitarists musicians whatever we could i don't know which one sounds enticing or if you have your own Mm. top five pizza places (laughs) top five superheroes top five netflix shows hulu shows top five spencers (laughs) spencer from uh did spencer from under oath go to silent planet is that why i like silent planet so much i think so no but they band. do have a similar vibe. Planet. I showed you Silent Planet the other day. Oh. That was the one I said I like Silent Planet. Silent You're like, is this Planet who this is? is so I said, cool. yep. Oh. They they're have like, like a really good vibe. Yeah, they're like kind of, they do like a spoken word thing into their screams. They're super heavy and then super not. They're like a metalcore genre that's like a branch that I really enjoy. Um, Silent Planet, check them out. <laughs> I don't know, top five what? Or not top five, if you have something else. I had something, but I just I realized it wouldn't apply to her very much. Wow. Uh, what was it? 
top three favorite guitar brands. Ooh. That's not. That does apply, you sack. Yeah, it does apply. You okay? Sack. You go first. Top top three or top five? Top three. Top. Five is too hard. It's okay. Top three favorite guitar brands. You start. Uh, I wonder what number one could be. Oh, geez. <laughs> you should have worn your. I should have PRS worn my PRS shirt. shirt. My number one is PRS because the man is a genius and is probably one of the greatest luthiers on this planet that's alive. Mm. Um. Second, Ernie Ball. Third. To be continued. See, three is kind of difficult. Yeah. Do you have yours ready? I don't know. I just like Ernie Balls. <laughs> that's, a, that's not a good Who's plural. Who's Ernie and I'm telling your husband? <laughs> <laughs> Alex sees this. He's like, where is he? Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> and like a Batman voice. Where is he? Yeah. Where's Jessica? <laughs> <laughs> She's with Ernie now. Yeah. The Muppet. <laughs> There you go. Kids. It's a kids show. It's a kids program now. Uh, yep. That's it. one, just Ernie Ball, and then you were like, "That's we're good. Yep. That's yep. my top three. <laughs> one. I don't really play guitar that much. I'm like looking at my guitars, too. I know. That's not even, that's not all of them, but that's pretty much the, my, uh, that's not my favorites. I, so... I would say it's hard for me because I play a lot of acoustic too, like in just my personal stuff in time, to personal time. Um, uh, for what we do, especially, I really like my Majesty. So Ernie Ball, a hundred percent. I want to get a Stingray. Um, I really like my Larave, which is an acoustic brand. Um, I want to try a Callings. I really, they're really sick. They have some like 335 type, like full body or full hollow body guitars. I have a couple of Gretches that I really enjoy. So I don't know. Ernie Ball. I don't like Fenders. Yeah, I don't like uh, well, Fenders. Well, okay. I take that back. Telecasters are sick. I really enjoy a Telecaster and a Jazzmaster, Jaguar, like some of the more offshoot ones. I, okay. Okay. Let me restart. I don't like strats. That's what I don't like. I both love and I hate strats I at the, the same time. Strats. strats sound cool. Stra I like how they feel. I hate how they sound for our, like what we do. Oh. Unless it's like single coil, plucky, jazzy goodness. Um, but yeah, they they sound really cool for chill. Jazz, smooth jazzy stuff or blues stuff or even punk stuff but for metal or anything heavier they're just no just no but i like the feeling of like the thin necks which is why i like my specific prs's neck so much because it's like the it's like thinner than their typical thin style neck it's more like a fender neck and i love it I'm the opposite. I don't. I love the sound of strats, but I do not like the way they feel. Yeah. At all. I don't like them a bit. But that's why I like the Telecasters. Is I like the way they feel a lot, and I love the way they sound, and it's the same. But I also think it's because I grew up like my grandpa has a, these like old '50s Telecasters and stuff that are super rad. That I really enjoy playing those, but. Um, I want to try the next guitar. I think I'm going to get is a, um, oh shoot. Bad stroke is the one I was showing you guys The nine string or an eight string. I'm going to get that is super sick. Nine it looks string. like Tosin Abasi's guitars that I think are super rad, but actually cheaper than his. I think they're cheaper the same price as his, but they're not as limited. But anyways, yeah. Nine string for the extra fattiness. <laughs> So we can play in G. It's like a fatty steak. Yeah. A big old meat. I feel like even though I never play them and I never use them for the type of music I play, just out of like pure appreciation for them, I have I think I'd have to say like a good 
custom shop American made Fender. Yeah. Americans, their custom made stuff is dope. Yeah. Their custom stuff is sick. All right. Any closing thoughts as we wrap her up? Patreon, possibly. Yeah. Patreon. Uh, you can find the link in our. It everywhere. is. Yeah, well, it's in like every bio, basically. And it's, I think it's towards the bottom. It says Patreon. And we are working on a lot of really cool things for it. I'm going to be painting some custom We Brought the Rain artwork, which is going to be cool. Uh, this podcast is for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Future podcasts and other fun things. I'm going to be teaching you filthy peasants how to sweep on guitar. <laughs> I'm not cleaning your house. I'm not your maid. <laughs> he taught me how to sweep. <laughs> yeah. I'm still, I practice sweeps every day. He taught me how to sweep. Yeah. And any other lessons, if you guys want more lessons on stuff that we do, then let us know. We record all our own music, too. So, producing. They're like, we know. Singing. <laughs> what is it that, no, oh, never mind. I think it's Snoop Dogg who says, like, like rapper, West producer. Coast. Well, he also says West Coast, yeah. <laughs> but, like, he's, like, rapper, producer, artist, blah, 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 Gamer. blah. Game, yeah. Oh, Twitch. Yeah. Jordan has a Twitch. You could watch him. And I play games. We play games together sometimes, but Jordan is always playing. Well, I mean, I'm always playing, just not yeah. always with you. Yeah, it's you. <laughs> it is an 18 and up Twitch. But I'm not even kidding about that. Not because of me. I'm, I was like, why is it 18 and up? <laughs> not because of me. I'm wholesome. Yeah. Well, you actually have to, technically, you have to be 18 and up in order to use Twitch anyway. It's in their, really? it's in their TOS. Yeah. But... Um, no the people that. I play with, they they have dirty mouths. Some of them. That's fair. So yeah, be warned. <laughs> fair. <laughs> you had to warn them because if you didn't, people were gonna get on there and they'd be like, "He didn't warn us. Yeah. Jordan didn't tell us of this." I thought I let my kid watch. And then they like unfollow us on every platform and burn all of our music. Not CD burning like they did in the 90s and the 2000s, but like the actual one with fire. With fire. <laughs> Great balls of fire. Hey, my grandpa was playing that song. Really? Yeah. Fancy. He's in the music video. That's actually a really a really cool song. Yeah, I think so he were. Rec- I can text him after this. Actually, I'll ask him if he was in the studio version of that too. I don't remember, but yeah, he was the guitarist. That's Jerry Lee Lewis. He was he played guitar for him. That's awesome. Yeah, he drove the bus. He quit because they did a lot of cocaine. That that makes sense. Yeah, don't do cocaine. You that's, don't do cocaine. I feel like that whole song is a euphemism for for drugs. It probably. I don't know. I could ask him not too. Be like, why did he write that song? What's it about? I was actually just texting him earlier. Yep. Yep. He just had his last... Well, maybe that. Maybe we shouldn't say that. It's kind of personal. I don't know. Anyways. We're not there yet. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I want him... I don't know if he wants me telling everybody that. It's exciting, but... Anyways. Um, good news. You know, I was like, is that a heart attack? Yeah. I know. I feel like I left that on a weird note. It's like, it's great. Like, I was telling him congratulations, so it was a good thing. But anyways... Sweet. Um, Patreon, follow us on all the things. Album, we're working on it. Are we going to release a new, another single? Do we know? I don't know? think so. No? It, ne- basically, next time when the music is out, it's going to be all the music. So that's cool. Sick. And then we'll already be working on a new album by the time. Yeah, what's exciting is we already have like some ideas. I think all of us kind of collectively have some ideas of next album stuff um so it should go even faster we'll probably be just working on it again i am a single (laughs) (laughs) are you gonna release me any of you single ladies out there (laughs) jess and i are married but jordan is a single (laughs) do you guys want to I do want to close out on your best screams. Watch out, ladies. Your boy's single. Watch out. Okay. <laughs> uh, either you could scream goodbye or sing goodbye or say goodbye. Do you want a low or a high? Uh, I don't know. Or a guttural or a pig squeal or an inhale. 
I would say whatever you're the most confident in. Okay. I would say, Jess, you want to start? Oh, no. Just say goodbye. This is going to be terrible. You sing it, say it, or scream it. <laughs> Okay. Sing it, scream it, say it. I don't know. There's a better way to say that. But. Goodbye. That's terrible. That's perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Goodbye. Spitting all over the mic. I don't even know if I can. <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's so loud. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Goodbye. There we go. It's pretty good. It's all right. Oh, look. It peaked. All right. Well, we'll see you guys on the later cast pods. <laughs> the, later, oh, right. the cast pods? <laughs> yep. We should call this that. Call the cast pod? Hey, it's us. And the We Brought the Rain cast pod podcast. Yeah.